Here we are back in the United States for a new adventure in autonomous mobility. Over the course of a week, we traveled through three states, met with key players in the industry, and tested some of the world's most advanced services in the field. The goal of this road trip is to discover new services. With this video, we also want to document and share our various discoveries. Mobility Masterclass is on American road trip on autonomous mobility. This week we will be in San Francisco to test the Waymo vehicles and discover their depot operations. But we will also have a look at the custom built vehicles developed by company Zooks. Tomorrow we'll be in the Silicon Valley and meeting with companies like WeRide and Pony AI. And on Wednesday we'll go to Las Vegas to test the Zooks vehicles. They're being operated on the strip, as well as meeting with the company V developing tele-operated vehicles for car sharing purpose. On Thursday, we'll go to Texas in Austin. We'll have a first look at the Tesla Robot Taxi service, as well as testing the Waymo vehicle through the Uber app. And finally, on Friday, we'll go to Dallas in Texas, testing the drone deliveries by companies like Wing, Zipline, and Flytrax. We arrived in San Francisco on Saturday early in the afternoon to support the Belgium economic mission led by Her Royal Highness Princess Astrid for a conference dedicated on autonomous vehicles co-organized by Hub Brussels, the University of San Francisco and Espace Mobilité. Before the event, we have the opportunity to introduce members of the delegation to Waymo's Robotaxi service, giving them a first real taste of this technology. You can you can push on this. And voilà. <laughs> Heading to oh my God, isn't it so Please awesome? Make sure your seat belt is fastened. <laughs> Any questions? Press the. I love this. Heading to Haight Ashbury Cooperative Nursery School. Oh my God. Please make sure your seat belt is fastened. For any questions, press the call impressive. support button to speak with a rider support agent. After this test ride, we join a cruise on the San Francisco Bay to officially kick off a week dedicated to autonomous mobility. The second day is dedicated to the economic mission. We begin by meeting Miguel Acosta, chief of the autonomous vehicles branch at the California Department of Motor Vehicles. Then we head to the University of San Francisco for the autonomous vehicle conference, where Her Royal Highness Princess Astrid makes a memorable entrance on board a Waymo. I didn't expect, but uh, it's really wonderful and uh, uh, to, to have this experience. I was not, never uh, afraid. We hope really that it will be uh, deployed in, uh, in Europe and in Belgium especially. The third and final day in California is devoted to three particularly inspiring meetings. First, with Tilly Chang, Executive Director of the San Francisco County Transportation Authority, in a particularly pleasant setting in front of San Francisco's City Hall. Next, we meet Professor William Riggs from the University of San Francisco for a ride down to San Bruno. Hi, Billy, how are you? It wasn't driving itself. It wasn't driving itself. No. You're still a human driver. I'm still a human driver. In San Bruno, we have a high-quality lunch meeting with Andreas Reschka, Senior Director of Product, Systems and Safety at Pony.ai. Finally, we continue our journey to the heart of Silicon Valley for a meeting with Dr. Yan Li, co-founder of the Chinese company WeRide. Pony and WeRide are two companies already operating robotaxis in China. We had the chance to test their services during our recent trip to Beijing, Shenzhen and Guangzhou. You can find the full video in the description. To conclude this day and our Californian journey, we order a Tesla Robotaxi for the very first time to make the two-hour trip between Silicon Valley and downtown San Francisco. We're now in the Silicon Valley taking a first Tesla Robotaxi ride. We could access the new Robotaxi app and actually we're gonna see how it looks like to have a safety driver using the FSD for a long distance trip to downtown San Francisco. So it's pretty impressive as you can see the FSD is on, the safety driver is not touching the steering wheel speed of around 120 kilometers per hour and yes we're going to San Francisco for a, a long drive. During these two hours between the highway and downtown the safety driver to our knowledge made no intervention.
Before heading to meet the company Vey and testing Zux's Robotaxis in Las Vegas, let's take a quick look back at our Waymo experience. This is the fourth year in a row that we come to San Francisco to test the Waymo vehicles. Uh, what we can see actually is that the driving behavior of the vehicles have become even more assertive. And what's really impressive is the density of vehicles. We estimate that there are around 800 vehicles in the city of San Francisco. You see them everywhere. They're kind of part of the panorama and it has become the first touristic attraction of the city. We have arrived in the well-known city of Las Vegas to see how Nevada is testing self-driving vehicles and self-driving technologies. We will see two companies. The first one is the company Zoops, backed up by Amazon, and they're testing self-driving shuttles, custom-built vehicles for moving people here around the Strip. The second company is named Vey. It's a German-based company testing remote-controlled vehicles for car-sharing services. I'm gonna Zooks. What does that mean? This is a custom-built vehicle manufactured by the company Zooks. Those are those little toasters. There are many driving here around Las Vegas. So my vehicle is just arriving next to me and now I'll be open the doors and we're ready for a ride. So we're just on board of the vehicle, so it looks really nice. There's a soft music, a bit like a, on an ascensor. Uh, but for the rest, I just need to press the start button and then I guess, all right, World starts, let's move now. And actually, I must say we're surrounded by many Zooks vehicles, so it seems that they have a few spots in the city, and uh, it's not exactly like the pickups and drop-offs of Waymo, where you can go where you want. It's actually, you need to, to start from specific locations, like here, the main entrance of a hotel. Zooks is also being tested in San Francisco, where we saw a few of them, and will soon be available in Austin and Miami. After these tests, we headed north of Las Vegas to meet Konstantin Winkler, VP of Operations at VEI, to discuss their teleoperated vehicle program. This is a fascinating topic that pushes the boundaries of autonomous driving. VEI operates a fleet of 50 vehicles as part of a car sharing service, where cars are delivered directly to your doorstep. This approach greatly improves fleet efficiency through remote repositioning, while also enhancing user comfort. There could be many applications for this in the future. Our time in Las Vegas comes to an end, and we hit the road again this time, heading to Texas. We're in Austin, Texas, that has become the testbed for autonomous driving in Texas. We will see many different types of self-driving technologies. In about a minute, we will test the first Tesla robotaxi service, almost real robotaxi service. You will have the safety driver sitting on the right seat, just with an emergency button. So let's start now the robotaxi service. As you can see, so driving is pretty smooth. The environment is quite different. We're not on highway. But yeah, it's working well and uh, I'm amazed by the, the app as well. So just for opening the trunk, finding the places you, where you're going to be picked up. So as always, you can see that everything is pretty well integrated in the Tesla ecosystem. In the interior screen, you can choose different apps, different options. The service area is better above 400 square kilometers here in Austin. The ODD is rather complex. It's a big, large American city. Of course, it's in other contexts than in Europe. You don't have many cyclists, a few pedestrians on sidewalks, uh, but very large, very big avenues, as you can see here. Clearly very assertive, so no hesitation at all at intersections when turning right, but also for uh, unprotected left turns. Would you call it some, sometimes a bit aggressive, even though I think this is to find the right position in the, in the traffic, but uh, very, it feels very, very natural. As you can see, the cars are pretty classic, actually. We don't see very 
a customized vehicle. The only thing you see is the small robot taxi logo on the sides of the vehicle. For the rest, it's the it's a classical Tesla car. Most most of them seems to be seem to be white. We have taken a couple of uh, Tesla robot taxi rides here in Austin, but as well in the Bay Area in California. And uh, I must say the experience is quite amazing. It's been very smooth rides and um, the app is working uh, pretty well, pretty obvious like, uh, like Uber or Waymo. We will now take some Waymo rides here in Austin. The big difference is actually that you don't use the Waymo app, but you use it through the Uber app service. That makes a difference because you never know if you're going to get a Waymo or a human driven car. Meaning that it's also a bit about this transition period where we will have a mix of human driven cars as well as robot taxis. Four years ago, we decided to go to Phoenix, Arizona to test a first robot taxi ride with Waymo. Four years later, we're now here in Texas, in Austin, taking another Waymo ride through the Uber app. In four years, we've seen this topic really increasing a lot, especially in the US and China. This has made possible thanks to the financial support of EIT Urban Mobility. I'm so glad I'm here with my colleague Quentin, covering those topics for four years now, covering this worldwide and taking another Waymo ride here in the city of Austin. The Waymo robot taxi just arrived exactly the same way it arrived four years ago in the city of Phoenix, Arizona. Although there seem to be around 100 vehicles and they're just as visible as in San Francisco, it took us more than 15 attempts to finally get a Waymo ride. Human drivers are still the majority. The ride itself was similar to what we experienced in other cities and we even witnessed a sudden avoidance maneuver that the vehicle handled impressively well. We're now on our way to Dallas, a three-hour bus ride from Austin, to explore a new facet of autonomous mobility, drones. We were also supposed to see autonomous trucks, but unfortunately, as is often the case on expeditions, not everything goes as planned. We just rented a car in Dallas-Fort Worth, and we're trying to find delivery drones in the north of Dallas. So first time that we might see those little delivery drones delivering things like a roasted chicken or a two cafe lattes. We are here in Fresco in the north of Dallas at one of the Wing many locations operated by the Google-owned company Wing. It's called the drone port. It means that you have different drones and the system is pretty simple. You have those drones flying over the employee, then you have a feathering system making it possible for the employee to attach a small cardboard box for deliveries. Then the, the drone will fly away to the final destinations and deliver the goods to the customers who have ordered through the Walmart app or some DoorDash and some other kinds of apps. This is marking the end of our American road trip with the latest innovation. Unfortunately, we could not order our own cafe lattes coming over the air, but for the rest, it's been an amazing week. We've seen so many things and the future is now. If you want to watch those videos, please go to the Mobility Masterclass YouTube channel.